My name is Patricia Rawlinson. I'd like to welcome you to the I Pledge Allegiance to the Flag project. This is a project that I've used um, a stencil to create, and I've used the stencil as a mask and as a, um, as a stencil. So I'm going to show you how to do all your detail through your stencil. I'm going to show you how to use your stencil for decorating different bits and things like that. Um, so it's actually got a lot of meat to this. I'm going to show you how to um, fix blurbles when you bleed under your stencil, and I'm going to show you how to make a very distressed look. Um, and how to set all the lettering and everything down in your project. Um, I hope you enjoy the lesson and have a great day. All right, we're gonna take, we've sealed our surface with multi-purpose sealer and then I've got a little bit of black paint in mine. And then we're gonna put some weathered wood medium, which is gonna be a crackle medium, here and there. So we just wanna just sprinkle it around, not everywhere, and just really spread it out. We just want some crackles in amongst our work. And just spread it out nice and thin, and it'll come back and we'll crackle on top. All right, then we're going to apply the crackle medium. This is kind of a long board, so I'm going to drag it down here. We're going to apply, not crackle medium, the weather, one more time, the paint um, with a really nice heavy hand where the crackle is. And we want it to base coat the first time. And once we apply it, we want to kind of get in and get out because it will lift your paint if you're not really careful. So don't linger and tarry over that same spot or it'll just kind of make a big mess, digs a hole. Now the neat thing about this is, is this paint will self-level, so if you end up with ridges and things like that, it will actually end up flat when you get done. So never fear. You can kind of pay attention to where you've got your crackle. And this is um, brush stroke, um, Specific. So if you brush in a circle, you're going to get circle cracks. If you brush straight up and down, you're going to get straight up and down cracks. Okay, while our paints are still not really cured, now this is going to be a really tricky kind of thing, because where I see that my paint is a little bit loose or still not dry, I'm going to want to be careful or chip the whole thing off. So what I'll do, I'll sand heavily at my edges. I've got some really coarse sandpaper. And then it's going to peel a little bit where I've got my crackle. So I'm going to stay out of that or just connect it just a little bit like I did just there. And I just really want to make this look a little bit more rustic. You can also use our handy scraper and just kind of peel some stuff off. See how that just kind of grabs a little bit of the wet stuff. And then I'll stop there and then I'll sand to get the rest of it. Get your shoulder into this. If you wrap your sanding paper around a little block of wood, that makes it into a sanding block. And that can be uh, kind of a helpful thing if, if this makes you tired. Okay, now I'm gonna take my um, raw umber, make a mess. And then I'm just going to paint over with water the whole board and then I'm going to wipe it down and then this dark color is going to settle sorry about my head and my hair in your camera it's going to settle in these cracks and then I'm going to wipe it back and it's going to make this look like it's old dirty cracks instead of fresh nice cracks I'll just age it just a little bit Do it with a little water so that you can lift it back out. You don't want it to be like base coated brown. Oop. Smeared some stuff there. All right, and then I've got this used paper towel. I'll just drag that back over the top. All right, and then we'll let that dry. All right, I wanna start by talking about stencils. Um, stencils are amazing for lettering. Um, if you were to do this in the traditional way where you had a pattern and you had to trace it and then you had to transfer it and then you had to base coat it, it would take you a very long time. Um, and the neat thing about this is when you find a pattern or a design you like that you can, um, you can totally 
make more than one of them and uh, make the stencil be a little bit more cost worthy. What we're going to do first, um, these stencils are reusable by the way, you wash them in the sink when you get them dirty if you want warm soapy water um, and just lightly you know, wash it with your fingers and um, then rinse it and you're good to go. And I don't wash my stencils unless I find one, like I, there was one I used for a background that I used a million times. And eventually you'll lose the integrity of the lines. So um, you want to be careful um, that once you use it and use it that you do clean it um, just because the integrity will get lost. But then you can wash it and then recover it. So. You're going to want to use a dome stencil brush. Sometimes these guys lose their hairs. This has got some loose little hairs here. Um, these purple ones are really pretty good. Um, the green ones that we've had are ones that will, like half of their head will fall out. But, um, and the, the more these get worn down, the better they are. So um, you want to kind of abuse them. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our blue. And we're going to, well, first we're going to line our stencil up. Um, you can tape it if you want to. Now, I find that when taping, the edges on a stencil that fits my board exactly. I find that when I tape around an edge, I still can get some shift. So to prevent that, I'm gonna get it lined up. Spend some time lining up because if you stencil something crooked, you're gonna be kind of sad later on. So you just take, um, if your paint is fresh, be careful of this technique because um, this will remove your fresh paint. But what you can do is you can find a hole and then find another hole. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go across here. Now, what this will do is this will anchor. See, I can't move the piece either direction. Um, if you do it on only one spot, it will rock. If you do it on two spots, it will not rock. So, um, what I used to do with my tracing paper is I would cut a hole um, someplace out of the design area. So, you could also do that. You could use a Zacto knife and put a couple of holes in a pattern if you didn't have something big enough Sometimes these little letters won't be big enough to gain foot um, for sticking. But in this case, we don't have that as a problem. So then we're going to get started with our blue. I'm gonna look at my, this is one of the exceptions. I've actually painted this before. Um, so I get to be like a, um, a tour guide for you. So we're gonna do all the blue lettering and then all of the stenciling is done the same way. So this really doesn't need me to show you again and again how to do stenciling in the colors. So you're gonna do the blue, um, the blue, the white, and the red all the same. And then the exceptions are gonna be, and I'll bring you back for that, is how to get the bands, where we've got the bands. So I'll do that. But we're gonna start with this um, bleach sand color. We're gonna always dip into your paint. Don't scoop, dip. So I pressed down to the palette, then I come over here and I, with pressure enough to bend the bristles, I give it three swirls, okay? The other way that you can do it is to dip and go one, two, three. I like the swirl because sometimes paint can be on this outer edge. So one, two, three, and you're good to go. And that just moves the paint and gets it into those bristles nicely. So we'll start up here with I Pledge. And there's two ways that you can do this. Most of these look pretty base coated. If I was base coating, I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna tap, tap, tap. And I'm not gonna worry about it covering the first time. I'll do it a second time. Okay, so then if we peek underneath there, then you can see that the line is nice and crisp and I can replace. If I wanted to do it really soft and kind of faded, I would spend more time over here like seven times wiping it off. And then I would go on here with very light pressure and I would just swirl. And you wanna be careful with swirling. If you don't know how to do it, test it because um, you can get a whole bunch of paint scooped next to the edge. So you really have to make sure that you're wiping the paint off effectively. Let me show you what the difference is in those two techniques. So that's just right away two techniques that you can do to make your stenciling different. And then the other thing that you can do, and this I'll show you later because I do have quite a bit of um, this going on, is you can go back and you can accent one side or the other or the middle, and that will give you some highlighted and shading and some detail. So for this case, I'm going to stencil everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill everything in. If you have any areas that are too close to each other, like that zero, that zero, that dot is really close, just take a piece of tape or a post-it note 
and put it there and then you don't have to worry about what I call ghosting. If I'm doing my, um, my F and I get it over here, then that will make that be white. And if I've already got this um, a color, then that will ghost or add its, like, its effect onto the other letters. So you do want to be careful when you have close letters to make sure that you mask them with something. A piece of paper even will work. Um, tape just is nice because it stays stuck down. When you, when you haven't painted anything on these letters, you really don't need to worry about it because then you'll be base coating over. You might need to mask these letters later on. All right, so I'm going to be putting a band right here. So I want to mark my, um, my area that I need the band to fit. The way that I'm going to get that done is I'm going to paint this word and I'm going to paint this word and I'm also going to paint this word, but I'm just going to do it like this. Just going to mark it so that I don't want to base coat it because it'll leave like a ridge and stuff, but I just want to mark it and now I'll know exactly where that needs to fit and when I put my tape I'll know that my letters fit within that. So that's the way that I'm going to handle that and I could actually go ahead and just mark here and mark here. Um, and now I have my line for both of those. And so that will be how I'm going to tape my line and then I'll base coat that um, with my red color and, um, and then I'll take my trim and then I'll do my lettering. All right, so I've just rolled my stencil up so that I reveal where I'm at. I'm gonna use a T-square. This is just a wonderful way to get straight lines. I'm going to get myself a little bit of space so my letters are completely on. We don't want any confusion with like your white touching your white on that band. And then I'll just give myself a line. Come up here. The neat thing is this doesn't matter about um, there's it doesn't matter if it's an inch and a half on yours or two inches or whatever it is. It just needs to fit the words that you need it to fit. Okay, and then down here look and see. Now in this case, I did not give myself the words. So let's bring this back down and let me give it a dusting. I've got this one here. Just go ahead and dust. Be careful of ghosting on my white letters. Once you go red on white, then you end up pink and it ends up really tough to, tough to make disappear. So then we'll go and take that back up. And that gives me my tape line. Okay. And then I'm going to skinch in just a little bit on my red line so that um, my red line, my, my white line, which is what the red line will be, will be my trim and it will cover all my stuff. Yep. So I don't want to. And then with tape, it bends. So sometimes you need to make sure that you've got that straight. Um, and so I'll come over here and that looks pretty good. And then I'll come here and that also looks pretty good. Okay, so I've got this taped already and then I just wanna push down my edges and then we'll base coat that area. And this becomes my stencil. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and base that whole area and then I'll tape this and base that area too. All right, so now we're gonna go, I've got my bands on there and then this one's got its pre um, laid out um, band and then I had decided when I designed this project, um, like I do, like we do the layout first and then I decide what the colors are afterwards. And when I did that, it was like, oh, you know, I think this is how I want this. I want this thing, this needed to have one more band here that would be red to carry this color down the piece. So then um, I'll show you how to use this band as that band. You could also just tape it, um, whichever way makes you happy. But it makes it super simple just to use the stencil. And then I'm going to reuse the tape that I did for putting my bands on to tape and mask my area because I don't want ghosting. All right, so now we're going to use Colonial Blue and we're going to really make sure we wipe it off on our paper towel. And we're going to go through the middle of these letters. And remember, this is that part when we start rubbing across a stencil, it can cup and it can bleed under. So really wipe it off. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go back and give mine an extra little 
swizzle there. Don't want it to be ugly now that I've gotten everything perfectly base coated. So we'll just wipe it across and it'll create the highlighting and the shading ultimately. Just make sure you reserve the area at the top and the bottom for your, um, just so it remains dark, sorry. Sometimes my mouth gets away from my brain when I'm trying to do both things at the same time. All right, and then I'll repeat it to strengthen because we're just doing such a dusty layer of paint. And you can lift it. I've still got my tape underneath here. You can lift it and verify. Okay, that's looking pretty good. All right, then we're going to repeat by picking up our colony blue and a little bit of our bleach sand. And then maybe just a little bit more bleach sand. And then that's going to go right through the very middle of the highlight that we did. Make sure that you're not walking around. If you walk around, it'll be too big a transition. So let's take a look. That's looking pretty darn good. And you can even hold your bristles if you want to, to make it just a skinnier brush. It's a kind of an awkward feel, but it helps. Sometimes the letters are too small and you just gotta do what you gotta do. You could switch to the Crescents, but at this point I feel like I have this brush dirty and I don't wanna be bothered. Oh, and I'm gonna ghost on my star. So be careful of that. You're gonna have to go back and patch things if you do that. And I want them balanced. I feel like I could pinch my brush and go with just a little bit more bleach sand for that middle highlight here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Crisper. There we go. And maybe one more here. Okay. Okay, so for the red, we're going to do a mix of berry red and bright salmon. And I switched down to a medium sized brush. I had my, these letters, the red letters are kind of big, and so it works better to stencil them with a um, big brush, but then I wanted to um, highlight them with just a little bit less. Now what's interesting about this right now is our stencil has now moved from being a stencil in which you base coat and fill something in to being a screen in which you add um, top details to your lettering. So it's actually serving two purposes, screen and stencil. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. And since I know I want my coat, and I talked it completely dry. I do that well. Since I know I want to be through the middle where these smaller letters are, I'm going to start down here and get that established. And then come through my bigger letters this way. Try not to go uphill. Super hard to stop yourself. Every now and again, you might need a stipple to. Okay, and then pick up, um, I'm going to do that after, I'll come back to you when I finish with my other letters. Okay, um, I realized I forgot to do um, this, ooh, be careful there, um, these letters in my bleach sand, but so now we're going to go in here, we're going to arch this across our letters and treat them separately. The bigger your letters are, the more you can spread your highlight over. Sometimes it's a good idea to hang on to your stencil because like you're really rocking it back and forth. Okay, next with my dirty brush, I'm going to go in with salmon. And really wipe that off. It doesn't change, and then that's going to be our brighter highlight, and maybe I'll squeeze that just a little bit, because these little letters. What's neat about this is you're getting your shading and your highlighting all done at the same time. Okay, Pot a little bit more. 
got a secret weapon at the end for anything that might have bled under. I think it's something that just really makes stencil projects be much nicer looking. I'll show that to you when I get done and then I'll finish the rest of these letters. All right, so we're gonna be way down here at the bottom and we're going to get our colonial blue and really wipe that off. My paper towel is getting kind of full. Don't, don't not go get a fresh paper towel because that will make things super messy. Now the one thing about this brush, I've got it dirty with all the colors because this was masked. It's possible that I might sneak up on this a little too fast and might end up with something super bright. Um, looks okay. So be careful when you've got a dirty brush that you clean it out. So now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of bleached sand and colonial and then we'll go skinny through the middle. Okay, there's that. Take a peek. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then you want to look at your piece and you want to squint. If you don't think that you have enough highlights, now we're going to do some um, lining, some drop shadow on this, and that will help us. And I boogered this up and spit and polish. We'll take things off. Okay, um, so. Um, squint at it and if you've got like if this is too white and it doesn't it doesn't compete well with these other guys Then you need to bring this up or bring this down and you can back off of your shading By going ahead into your base color and then just masking over the top of it So that's how you can handle that and I think I might be ready to pull this off and then do some finishing work All right, so here is the revealed um, Where we're at right now now what I'm seeing up here on my to the with my flag and my my stars and all the things that I've got going on up there. This fades so bad I almost can't see it against the black. So I'm gonna lay this back down on there. I'm gonna line it back up. And by the way, that's why I tape. It's really a good idea to do your um, all your detail before you have to line everything up. Lining up a big stencil is really hard. So then what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of just a dusting to this whole word. So it doesn't stand out, but it does stand up. And then we'll take it and see. So see, now you can see that word. It's just a little bit bolder. Now here's what I was talking about with this, um, with these masks. So now I can take and line my line up, Just get it straight to my edge. And then that's lined up. I'll take one of my tapes put it over the word. Oh, that works great for both. And actually, you know what? I just center this just a little bit more. I'll have both of them done. Make sure I'm straight. Okay. Oops, my brush. And then, oops, and I think I'll mask that one too. I'm just reusing my tape from the other thing. That I don't have to be careful. And then if I have a little bit more paint than I think I need on my brush right now, and one more mask, um, if I have a little bit more paint than I think I need, then I'll start tapping really lightly, just super gently. And then I'll tap everywhere super gently and then go back and tap a little bit harder. Straight lines are one of those things that, um, that you can have mistakes with. The other thing um, that's kind of fun is we've created a whole series of banding tools. We've got checks and lines and um, eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch, all that kind of stuff so that you can do this on any project and save yourself a lot of measuring and that kind of thing. Okay, and so I'll just get that base coated. All right, and within every one of these stencils, there's another thing that happens. You have, within all of these, you have multiple stencils. You have the word allegiance, you have I pledge, um, to the flag, blah, blah, blah. You have stars sitting here, United States. You can use the United States separately from something. You could make a little sign with, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Um, then you could use the stars on the top and the bottom. You could do one nation under God, same thing, make a band and have the stars be repeated, liberty and justice for all. Um, this is a bad example of one of these, but if you had like a welcome sign that had some other phrase with it, that welcome word would be a really good example. 
So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stars up here to the top and I'm going to use them um, to make a star banner up there. Okay, the next thing that we do, the final step with this besides varnish, and this would be, because this is a primitive kind of piece or a rustic one, um, you would want to use your um, ultra matte varnish by DecoArt uh, because that has no sheen to it at all. Their matte varnish does have a little bit of sheen. All right, the next step that I like to do um, is I am going to sand with really uh, rough sandpaper like I did in the beginning, and I'm going to go through my letters. Notice that my flag letter lettering is way brighter than my red lettering. So I'm going to go through this, and that's going to knock that down just a little bit. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. Okay, so then you're going to want to go through all of your lettering just a little bit. And if you had, let's see, I had one place. I have a little teeny bit of a a burble right there. Let me see if I can get you way in. Way, 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 way in. And let's see if you can see it. So right there on the edge. I don't like when I see any kind of bleeding because that just kind of pisses me off. But um, so what you can do with that is just make sure that that's an area that you sand. And now it's gone and you don't have to worry about it. But you do want to be able to see a little bit of texture in all of your lettering. Be careful, um, I just recently did a project that had an R, and it was my last name, so it was Rawlinson, and I did too much sanding on the leg of the R, and now it looks like a P, and it says Paulinson. So I have to go back and put a little bit of paint right there. So that's what you wanna do. Now this, right here where I was giving the example of the I pledge, and by the way, you have to go up and down to keep your lines in the same direction. Don't sand in different directions. Look at how that knocked that back. So I'm just using a little corner of my sandpaper just to address that word. And then when I get done, I'll go here, get bigger. I can use the sanding block or um, whatever, and I can do big scrapes just to unify the look of things. And it makes a lot of dust be prepared to vacuum.